What is going on everybody? Today we are checking out the latest Tesla software update. This is 2022.36.2. Now back in the day when I got my Model 3 back in 2019, you would get software updates usually once a month, sometimes more, and they were almost always incredibly exciting. And somewhere around the end of 2021 or mid-2021 or so, the software updates kind of slowed down and when you got them, <laughs> we had a big stretch there of cold weather improvements, which basically was nothing. Um, and now we're starting to get some exciting updates Again. So the one I want to talk about from last time is alternate routes. We're going to check that out in this video. That's from the 2022.28 upgrade. But there's a bunch in this 36.2 upgrade that I want to show you and check out today because they are some exciting updates, some really cool stuff like that you can actually use and can be excited about. So let's look at the release notes and then we're going to go through each of these and check them out. All right. So first up, we got improvements to karaoke. You can sing along to your favorite songs in this. It's not something I've used all that often, but it was fun when it first came out and what's really cool here is now backseat passengers can join in on the fun by having the lyrics on the screen in the back so we will definitely be checking that out and it could be a lot of fun with your kids or something energy app now this is something that's been on tesla's for a long time but surprisingly when the refresh model s and x came out you couldn't really use this app it wasn't in the menu now at some point somebody discovered you could use the voice command and say i don't know show me energy or whatever the command was and it would pop up the same one we had in the model 3 and model why but it was kind of cut off and weird looking and it definitely was not fitting the screen it didn't it had all the information but some of the text was cut off and stuff and then recently Tesla actually totally removed that so the voice command wouldn't work either and people were actually kind of upset by that I thought it was weird because it I don't know it was so janky I didn't really use it well now Tesla has brought back the energy app way new and way improved now we are gonna go for a little drive tonight to check that out because you have to have a trip but this lets you monitor the amount of energy used while driving and parking see how much energy is consumed by different vehicle components, driving behaviors, and environmental conditions, and you can also view your energy used in comparison to trip projection and the battery indicator, and receive personalized suggestions for using energy more efficiently. So this will give you tons of insight. Before, it was basically, here's how much energy you're using compared to what was expected, and that was kind of it. Now, you're going to get details on everything that's using energy and how you can kind of save energy. So really good for newbies, and maybe for us uh, kind of pro EV drivers, we'll look learn something as well. Cabin overheat protection can now be customized, so it will only turn on at a certain temperature. Now this is really cool because you don't really need cabin overheat protection for the sake of your car. The car can sit out and get super hot in the sun like all cars do, but I know I like to leave it on just so stuff in here isn't getting too crispy. And this is really a safety feature in case you forget your kids. I know that sounds crazy, but it does happen or you have a dog in here or something. It can keep them safe for a little bit longer so you can kind of wake up and realize, oh my gosh, and run back to the car and everything's okay. But with this, it's kind of nice to customize if you're not using it for that type of situation, but maybe you just don't want your car to get too hot in general, you can maybe raise that limit a bit so you save some battery, but still your car's not getting super hot inside. Tesla app improvements. Now this one's really cool. You can view the media player details in the app, which I don't know, maybe, I don't think that's that useful. It sounds almost a little creepy to me, but maybe you want to do that. And the coolest part, you can see an estimated time of arrival in ETA to the destination if you're using the app. So if we put a destination in and say, I'm driving somewhere and my wife checks the app, she can see, oh, he's going to be home at this time or whatever. So you can disable those types of features if you want, but I don't no, I think this is great and uh, I'm really happy with uh, this addition. Man, this update is packed. So additional supercharger information. So this will show you the most popular times at a supercharger. This is just like what Google Maps has for tons of businesses and stuff. It'll show you when it's the most crowded and it'll show you the rates. So of course you'll pay more to supercharge when those places are busier and you'll pay less at off-peak times. And so you'll get to see those rates and how busy it is at the current time with this new information. Car left open notifications. Now this is something we've had for a while. This did come in a software update. Date. It was a great addition. If you leave a door or the trunk or the front open or even a window, you'll get a notification on the app that tells you, oh, this has been left open so you can go close it or whatever. Well, now this will let you know if your doors are left unlocked accidentally. So I'm not sure how that would happen if you have the auto locking, but hey, maybe you don't use auto locking. Maybe you don't like it. You'll walk away. You forget to lock the car. You'll get a notification. Even though all the doors and windows and trunk are, is closed, you'll get that notification that the car is unlocked and then you can fix that. Just lock it in the app or you can come back to the car if you need to for some reason. 
and then a new language for Lithuania. So sweet. Let's check out some of these features and then go for a quick drive to check out some of the other ones that we need to drive for. All right, now first up is karaoke. Of course, I have muted it so I don't get a copyright strike. I just picked <laughs> the first option there. So we can see the words are popping up if you want to sing along. And if we scooch back into the back seat here, so I'm basically sitting in the third row, bam, you can see the screen. And I will note, if you've not seen one of these screens in person, they look much bigger in person than they do on video. I was quite surprised the first time I saw one of these screens. So even sitting way back in the third row, as I'm sitting now, this, this text is easily readable. This looks very, very cool. So let me zoom in on that for you. And you can see the text is scrolling for, you know, whatever song you want. And the people back here can join along. It looks really good, actually. So if you click that, that gives you some information about the song. And you can adjust your uh, things here if you need to. Go back to the lyrics. And what does this button do? Get a little microphone. Oh, okay, so if you want to turn the music off or the words off or whatever, that's what that'll do. But again, I don't want to turn the sound on and get a copyright strike. So really nice addition. If this is something you use, I mean, this is great. This is very cool. It looks really, really good. All right, so we're in the Tesla app now and we're checking out this feature where you can view the, well, ETA will do in a minute, um, but you can check with the media and you can see here it's uh frozen <laughs> so let it go frozen um i paused it but i guess i can play it from here in the car and if i turn it up yeah so it's playing i, I can't do that again um but you can skip media that's i don't know that's kind of weird that's uh kind of funny and it's showing that it's actually karaoke is going on here you got the mic on the right side so pretty funny um, party in the USA. So yeah, really, I mean, it's kind of a cool feature. Again, I'm not sure why you'd want to control this from the app exactly, but you know, actually you could have your passenger in the back if they want to turn it up or turn it down. If they have app access, they could do that. So a nice addition. I would like if it was more kind of turn offable in the car. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool nonetheless. All right. I switched over to my phone. I hope the audio is okay. The, I don't know. The GoPro wasn't looking so good in the dark here. Uh, so checking out co cabin overheat protection, um, kind of setability right now and so we're in the settings you go into safety here and then this is your customizability so not exactly what i was thinking i was thinking we would get something along the lines of like i can pick exactly what temperature it activates uh and i think it normally right now activates around 100 so it looks like you're not going to be saving a ton of battery with this you actually be using more but if you want to be extra safe you can go as low as 90 degrees now that might sound warm but keep in mind in a car even on a cold day if it's sunny you're going to be hitting 90 degrees real quick so this would have it on pretty much all the time <laughs> um so it tells you right here selecting a higher temperature will reduce energy consumption so if we click the little i here can we click that no it's just information for us um and if we want to save some battery we can go to 95 or 100 that's the highest temperature so that would save the most battery but if you want to be extra safe you can do that uh, but i think we'll leave it on 100 this feature in the x has worked well for us uh, since we've gotten the car all right, so let's check out this supercharger information here. You can see we're here. I don't know why this is the first suggested supercharger when it's so far, but whatever. Um, so I'll click my local supercharger here, and we are at Schwartz Creek. So you can see here it's currently 45 cents per kilowatt hour. So I like that they make that so obvious and upfront. Um, boom, there's the price you're going to pay. And you can see that is not a very busy supercharger. And right now it's not busy at all. If we go somewhere that's a little busier, so go down to Ann Arbor, which is a pretty heavily trafficked one. And bam, you can see that there is, let me adjust that a bit for you, uh, a lot more usage here in the middle of the day where it's 46 cents per kilowatt hour. Again, that is, that is pretty expensive. Um, but it's currently off peak and you can see it's currently 23 cents per kilowatt hour. So you can save some money there compared to the peak rate. And again, if you go early in the morning, basically before noon, and after 7 p.m. is going to be cheaper for you at that supercharger. And then the middle of the night here, you can see it pretty much drops off to nothing. Um, but I do like that they make it very obvious what price you're going to pay when you go to the supercharger. You still have their six stalls available um, out of the total of eight stalls. So there's uh, six that are open and eight or uh, two are being used currently. And then your idle fees and all of that. And you have your conveniences down there, which I believe you can also click these and it'll tell you, yeah, the restrooms in the area <laughs> you can use and all of that. So uh, yeah, that's actually that, that looks way better than it used to. Um, so happy to see that change. Alrighty, so here we are. We took a short trip down the road and we've used 1% of our battery, which is exactly what was estimated. You can see up here in the top left. And this has quite a lot of information and it's pretty cool. So driving used 1% and it used 0.1 more percent than the car thought it would by doing this drive. Climate used 0.1%. I had it off for some of the time just on accident and now it's on and I'm like getting way too hot. So I'm going to turn it back off. Um, so I had that on and it used 0.1%. 
which is what was expected. So consumption versus expectation is what's on the right here. And then battery condition conditioning, we didn't do any battery conditioning, so we're good there. Elevation, we actually used minus 0.2%, and that is minus, that's basically 2.2% better than the car thought we would get from elevation. And I did one hard acceleration coming out of a stop, um, and it didn't really say anything about that. And then everything else, so that would be like screen, radio, headlights, things like that, used 0.1%, which is, again, expected, um, what the car expected to do. And then some range tips on the right here. So far, I'm sure there's more than this, but what we're seeing here I don't feel is all that useful. Aggressive acceleration consumes more energy. Use chill mode to improve efficiency. So that's nice if you don't know anything about electric cars, but that's kind of like just true of any car ever. <laughs> like go slower and you'll use less energy, but you know, it's nice to have it there. Um, I do want to put it in chill mode and see if that goes away, but then also going uphill cost 0.3% and going downhill saved 0.5%. Um, and that's kind of where we got this, um, where is it? The elevation got us, saved us 0.2% more than, than the car thought. Um, and it says we'll arrive at our destination with 5%. I just picked some random spot. So let me go into settings here. I'll just keep you with me. And we'll do pedals and steering. And let's go to chill. And then get this out of here and see... Yeah, so if I start driving just real quick. Okay, so uh, it still says aggressive acceleration. Gives you the same tip, even though I have chill mode on. And I would love to see this on longer trips and how it does. Uh, the range estimates have been really, really accurate lately. So uh, it's nice to have more information, though, over here um, about what is actually going on and what's actually consuming your energy. Okay, I actually did a little bit of driving and it did change this message. It Now it just says aggressive acceleration consumes more energy. It is not suggesting that I change to chill mode. Because, of course, we're in chill mode. I did turn that on. So that's pretty cool to see. Um, really nice chart here. And that's the rated. If we go to trip, I didn't show this screen. But this is kind of what we had before. It looks a little nicer, a little more refined. Uh, <laughs> there's some raccoons up there running around. Um, uh, it's a little more refined. looks a little nicer. But basically, this will be um, expected versus what actually happens on the trip. Uh, live projection. 78.2%. Wow, this camera looks good in the dark. Um, anyway, yeah, so really nice energy screen here. Loving that. And then the other thing I wanted to show you while I was out here is the alternate route. So if we get rid of this, if you click on your route here, now this is really cool. So you have that and it's not, no, give me alternate routes. Maybe it's only when you first enter it. Let me do that real quick. So here's your alternate routes. It gives you two options. And what I really like about this, I thought you could kind of close and open that and it would still be there. What I really, really like about this is if you click this alternate route, it instantly changes to that. There's no loading, there's no reloading. I can click this route. You can click on the time. It's a little easier kind of target to hit, uh, but you can switch between these really like instantly. So they're all loaded when you kind of queue it up. And you can instantly switch between those. If you close this, I mean, of course I should drive a bit. I'm pretty sure you can just close. No, now they're gone. Hmm. I thought you could close that and reopen it. That's kind of strange um, that you can't kind of select the route once that's closed. So I guess you got to pick the route right when you request it. Um, because after that, you're not going to have that option anymore. And then here is your example in the app here. If you go down to navigation, it says we're going to the Meyer Deli. That's where I said it. It's 182 miles away, and we will arrive at 1250 a.m. So very cool to have that ETA right in the app. It looks great. Uh, and it's just a nice piece of information to have. We can click on the map there, and you can see the destination in the bottom right there. The white is where we're going. Um, and these are the nearby superchargers uh, that are nearby us right now if we want to charge up some more before we continue on this trip. And then finally, the notification for your doors being unlocked when unexpected. So right here, you have your car left open notifications, which again, we've had for a while, doors or doors and windows. It'll notify you. Here, you will be notified if any trunk, door, or window is left open. And then this is the new part, or if your vehicle is left unlocked unexpectedly. Now, I tried to get this to trigger, but uh, being at home, I guess that's not unexpected for it to be unlocked. And then when I did that little drive, I tried randomly in the road, and it also would not trigger. So I'll try to find a pic for the, of that for you online. If I can't find it, though, um, I can show you a pic of the door and window notification. I'm sure it looks just like that, except it says it's unlocked. So overall, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you have any questions, leave those down below, and you will see me in the next video.